Hello Reef DVMs here again and this time it's part two. Uh, we're into the framing of this little red barn project. <laughs> Welcome to Minnesota. 48 inch auger drilling a 16 inch wide hole but unfortunately it's the 19th of December and the frost is uh, upon us. So because of uh, financial constraints it became eventually easier for us to build this in the winter for, with the winter discounts and so forth. So you know, 32 holes we have to get drilled four feet deep through the Minnesota frozen ground. So what we're planning on doing here is dropping a, a pre-made concrete cookie in these holes. Then we stick the poles in on top of that. And then we drop two bags of sacrete in along with them to kind of hold them in place. And then, you know, that sacrete will obviously get like a rock as the, as the moisture comes in the air. We got the poles in on day one, got the sacrete in, and got them backfilled. The site is not perfectly level. Um, it's just unfortunate, but it's the way it is. So at that point then, we brought in some Class 5 gravel and uh, level up the site. Obviously, this buries the poles in the ground a little bit more, um, but that was uh, somewhat planned for, so we had extra pole height, so it wasn't going to be a real big issue. So here we are about the 20th or so of, of December. Um, we've got some class 5 coming in. Not too bad a shape considering that a lot of the ground is frozen where this is being dug out. Once we got the class 5 dropped that day, we had to turn around and get it spread so did the neighbors skid steer, you could say, um, to us. And uh, with my brother's help here behind the wheel, you know, the class 5... Uh, recycled uh, gravel got spread ASAP and a, a very quick order a barn pad got uh, made a little higher now this isn't the apron the apron off the side of the pad and stuff all have to come in the spring um, but this was enough just so that we could uh, function within the barn throughout the winter and not have uh, too big of a gap hopefully on the back side of the barn um, if we hadn't done this, the gap on the back side of the barn could be as much as three feet between the bottom of the steel and the, and the ground. So, anyways, we then squared up the first corner, um, got the on it, and of course a green board runner at the bottom of it, which is a 2 by 6 As you can see, there's notches in the top of the poles because we're going to do a saddle method here with the trusses. Really, everything at this point went pretty good. Um, using some friends, using some family, using some crew members. Um, from the, the Cleary company, but the, all in all, this is this is a pretty nice build. One thing nice about using uh, the particular company we used, which is Cleary, you can pretty much uh, buy the barn and all the materials, and you can you know have them put it up, or you can put it up. You have all your options. But this is what it looks like so far. Um, we're real pleased with how it's going at this point. Um, as you can see, we've you know working on getting the framing up and it takes us several days it wasn't like this is a one day collection of video that's why the the weather and the sky looks different between it we get to new year's eve and we're finally ready for trusses it's been about uh... you know two weeks now since we started the actual hole digging got cleary out there with a the skid steer and we used a bo boom hoist um, lift them up in the air and then basically put them in place really not too hard to get them in place. Uh, saddle it here on one side, lift the other side up, get it saddled. Uh, really went quite smoothly. A um, couple number 20 nails in each one, I think there's four. And then we uh, drilled two big bolt holes through and, and threw in some um, galvanated uh, washers and nuts on those and just squeeze it all nice and tight and we're pretty much set to go. The trickiest part about putting up the trusses is really again not putting them in the grooves and putting them up it's just squaring up the whole building and uh, making sure that the, the roof line looks straight that to me was the, the toughest part uh, the trusses obviously cover the 30 by 70 part of the barn and then off the trusses on what would be the north side we're putting a, a 12 foot lean which will have like a 2 by 12 rafter if you want to think about it that way so we'll get a little extra space on that side of the barn and uh, it's a little cheaper than just making a 42 um, foot wide barn with 42 foot um, wide trusses. Um, adding a lean is, is just a little bit easier way to go for us financially. And besides, we don't really have too much of a worry of the posts on that side in the inside of the barn because we can just drive in between them and, and park stuff because they're 8 feet on center. 
And then to make it easier, at the front of the lean, uh, we did put in um, one header, which gave us a 16-foot opening in case we do want to drive a piece of equipment in, and that's what we're putting up here. It, it's it's really not too hard to put the header in when you've got something like a boom hoist and a, and a skid steer like this. It, it goes in pretty smooth. Over course of, now what, probably three weeks, the ground is frozen pretty hard, the class 5 is frozen, so really maneuvering on this in the winter really quite easy. I guess the biggest headache is just the cold and, and you know, swinging a hammer like I've been doing for the last several weeks um, and punching in nails in, in the cold. Other than that, uh, the winter has actually made it somewhat nice to build. Uh, we don't have to worry about rain and we don't have to worry about mud and sliding around. Uh, for the most part, the, the ground is nice and solid and easy to work on. Once you set something in place, it pretty much gets rock solid, so you don't have to worry about it moving much. Um, into January here already, and uh, now we're putting up the roof purlings. Set them on edge for maximum strength. Um, ran them all the way down um, about every two feet uh, to give maximum holding power to the steel. You know, just prevent, you know, um, snow load issues in the future and obviously wind issues. Uh, the roof steel we're planning on screwing on, side steel we're planning on screwing on. Uh, we're using a Fabro steel, um, you know, it should be a pretty strong steel. It's a rib steel, it's 18 gauge, so I've got that all ordered. And again, since it's a little red barn project, obviously the barn's going to be red and the roof's going to be white. By January 3rd here, we had everything pretty much framed in. Things uh, looking good. Um, by January 4th, we had the doorway framed in and some of the big door framed in, so we're pretty much ready for steel at this point. I'm going to continue that with another video here coming up. Um, again, I appreciate you guys watching, and uh, please subscribe to the channel to show support for us, and we'll continue to put out uh, videos like this. Again, click like if you could to show that you like for the video, and we'll also continue to put out more farm videos like this. Thank you for watching.